What if forks were made of salt? Would every bite of food be perfectly salty? Let's take a look at our stakeholder requirements. Number one, it must look like your everyday fork. And number two, it must be capable of stabbing and lifting a piece of steak. After weeks in the design phase, I finalized the CAD models and bought one of these Himalayan pink salt blocks. The same kind of salt in those lamps that girls like, apparently used for cooking in the blocular format. And so I set out, not to cut, carve, or chisel, but to liberate a fork from that block of salt. I started freehanding it with my reciprocating saw, confident that the fork would be ready in time for lunch, but I ended up with this dinky three-pronged thing. I figured I could do better, so I transposed my CAD model onto the remaining piece of the salt block and got back to liberating. But that's when my problems really began, and I saw my first catastrophic failure. The failure of the next attempt was my fault just brain damage, to be honest. And a few hours into attempt number four, frustration was mounting. Dinky boy number one started to look pretty good, so I tried making its prongs pointy with the Dremel. I googled in desperation, and apparently a fork can have as few as two prongs. So stakeholder requirement number one, long forgotten, I decided to try making a two-pronger, holding the salt in my hands instead of in the vise because I thought it would be less likely to break. Fuck! I do still have all ten fingers, but I ended up with this abomination. Technically a fork, but technicalities were not going to carry me to victory here. I'd run out of chunks of salt that were big enough to make a reasonably sized fork with, and I think inhaling salt dust was starting to get to me. I'm fucking covered in salt. So I gave up for the day, and after a pretty uninspired rethink, came to the conclusion that I needed to buy some new saws. For cutting the fork's prongs, I bought a scroll saw, which has this tiny, delicate blade. And I figured if I'm gonna cut off a part of my body, it might as well be a whole arm. So I got this huge miter saw for quickly cutting chunks out of a new block of salt. If I wasn't inhaling an unsafe amount of salt dust before, my storage room slash workshop started to look like a scene out of a war movie. But at least if something went wrong with my new saw, my body would be nicely preserved. I came back a few hours later after the dust had settled and started scroll sawing, which actually started decently well, although the fork was looking a bit thick. But I cut out some prongs and figured I'd narrow them down with the Dremel. Progress was slow, so I thought I'd cut the fork in half lengthways. And of course I broke the handle. But that's okay, short fork good. So I went back to the Dremel, but instead of the prongs getting sharper or thinner, they just kept crumbling. My next idea was to cut a wedge out of the salt block, and then just scroll saw some prongs and they'd be pointy without further modification. But the salt just crumbled. Then I thought of cutting triangular prongs out of a thin slice of salt, sort of like shark teeth, which would have been great if the point of a fork was to inflict maximum damage on your food. I was out of ideas and dejected. I slept for three hours in the middle of the day after this, and when I coughed later on my mouth tasted salty, so that probably wasn't good. I considered giving up, but then I thought to myself, where would we be if our ancestors had given up when carving the first stone tools? Where would we be? So I started looking for alternatives. I discovered that you can actually melt and cast salt, but that would require me to build an 800 degree furnace, and the results that people were showing on YouTube weren't all that promising for fork making. But then, on a Quora post about laser cutting salt, I stumbled upon my hero. Antonio Lodico eight years ago wrote, perhaps just water. Legend. I cut out a new block of salt and then the rough shape of a fork without worrying too much about the thickness of its prongs. Then I dipped the prongs in water over and over until they dissolved and became thin enough to be working fork prongs. A few finishing touches with the Dremel, and there we go. There was just one thing left to do.
come on. Oh, I think I need to. Oh! A bigger chomp. I'm shaking. Dude, yes, it actually worked. I'm gonna go to suck on the fork. And every bite was indeed salty. I had to put my salt grinder and forks where they belong. Despite some understandable concerns about hygiene. So will you try it if I clean it? User reviews were pretty good. Are you stoked for the salt? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh, oh, look at that. It's actually really good, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's really good. Do you think you can make this? We'll use a research. Okay. Yeah, just... Perhaps this one? The lift. Mm. <laughs> My friends have herpes, as well as the indelible memory of the salt fork experience. And let me tell you, friends, once you go salt fork, you can't go back. You just can't. Some notable drawbacks of the salt fork are its less than impressive pasta twirling and near inability to pick up certain foods with a higher water content. <laughs> also, it disintegrates with every fork and every bite, and to wash it is to destroy it. But nevertheless, I fell in love. It was a good run. It was a beautiful time in my life when I was using the salt fork. But after a couple weeks, I could tell its life was drawing to a close. So I deepened its grooves one final time and fired up one final steak. I got 15 times my recommended daily sodium intake, but it was worth it. Sort of. It was horrible. It was horrible. It was way too salty. <laughs> oh, oh. More than a utensil, the salt fork is a reminder that life and the best things in it are temporary. That you too will one day sink your teeth into a piece of steak for the last time. I hope for you that that day is far in the future. Thanks for watching.